Uh, with me, I have the chairman of the program committee, Professor Emeritus Lars Holmberg. Welcome up. Thank you. I mean, we did a lot of physical exercise and we did, yes. did a lot of brain exercise today. Sure. What would you say, is there anything during those two days that has been a special impression for you? Oh, loads of things, loads of things. And I, I, I've learned a lot. Uh, I, would, I would say that one thing that stands out to me is that the situation is very different in different parts of the world, of course. But at the same time, I also recognize that uh, seeing the, uh, these different faces of the differences, the problems we have, the underlying basic problems, are very often the same, even on the different scales. So I'm thinking about problems of data acquisition, infrastructure to deliver care, uh, research funding, and things like that. So by that note, I think we have a lot to learn from each other and a lot to export and import in, in terms of know-how and logistics, uh, how to proceed. Thank you. I give you the stage. Um, some reflections. Uh, first of all, a very, very warm thank you to all the speakers, to the program committee who did a lot of work, to the facilitators in the workshops that I've seen in action, very effective, um, and uh, the organizing team, of course, Madeleine Neal and Justin Stewart, who did a beautiful job. And of course, thank you to all the delegates who took part in these discussions uh, in a very, very engaged uh, and open-minded way that took us a long way. Now, thinking about the format of this conference, uh, Pan Patsyarka, uh, uh, that sits here, reminded uh, us uh, the first evening that we met that going to a conference like, for instance, the American Society of Clinical Oncology, a mega conference, is like going to a stadium rock concert. It's, it's very big, it's uh, loud and noisy, it's, it's spectacular in many ways, but it is a one-way communication. And then thinking about the format we have here, this is much more like chamber music. Chamber music can be extremely effective uh, to move your heart and can be uh, extremely gratifying to listen to. And in executing chamber music, the different musicians have to listen very closely to each other. So I think this has been uh, a wonderful uh, session of two days of chamber music uh, in science and politics and logistics. Uh, I have a few quotes from different things that I heard. Uh, and of course, this does not in, in any way cover all the topics. But I think I, I, I noted some recurrent themes that I uh, might remind you about. Without good data, an analysis of those. To define the problems that we have, there are no ways that we can design effective strategies. And that goes all the way from prevention over to precision medicine. Sometimes a gentle push, a nudging, if you like, you know, the Nobel Prize in economy was about nudging you to go in a certain direction. Sometimes small movements like that can be very effective to increase activity and funding in an under-resourced area. But sometimes, on the other hand, frog leaping is much better and much more effective. So, for instance, in taking frog leaps in using uh, digital technology or frog leaping of the kind that Arne Purushuttam told, told us about in Tata, uh, the Tata Foundation. Earlier diagnosis, earlier diagnosis, earlier diagnosis comes back all the time. And of course, with earlier diagnosis, we have to have an infrastructure that can deliver even the simple, in quotation mark, uh, radical local treatments in an effective way. I also heard that funding parties in high-income countries should consider to fund research that has a more direct implementation in middle- and low-income countries. There can certainly be a significant 
knowledge transfer from low-income countries also to high-income countries. We need to organize the infrastructure around the patient, not around the healthcare professionals. And do not ask the patient, what is the matter with you? Ask the patient, what does matter for you? So I found uh, that in a sort of very meta or global fashion, the take-home message for me was, uh, I'm citing uh, uh, Mrs. Simao, Dr. Simao, uh, here partly saying that everyone and every capacity that you represent here has a role to play to improve cancer care. And I would like to side with her to say there is even a moral obligation to see that cancer care improves in areas where it's not satisfying today. I think use all the good ideas that you have gathered here when you come home. Uh, take also all the good ideas from the post-conference report that will come out of this. And why not uh, take uh, the idea from the Biden initiative, go home, work with a capacity you never worked with before and do something new. So thank you very much, all of you, and I wish you a safe uh, journey home and uh, a creative and constructive continuation of your work for improving care for cancer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With me, please come up. I have uh, one of the people who has been at this conference, and I'm also waiting for Kwanalele uh, Asante, who is coming up. And uh, Alessandro De Capua, you, you are um, uh, from the Union for the International Cancer Control. If you're talking to the microphone, Hi. what is your takeaway message for, from this conference? You've been here for two days. Well, Hi, welcome. Hi, everybody. Well, first of all, what a ride, I have to say. Um, um, being asked to you know, give my consideration in front of so many experts and world leaders, I feel quite humble. But I suppose my uh, point of view from the Union for International Cancer Control uh, can be none other than one about equity. And as we all discussed, uh, throughout this conference and also, first of all, congratulations on how it was, not only the program, but how it was set up that really allowed for certain conversations to take place. Um, so we saw the great potential there is with the innovation in cancer medicine and what's going on in cancer treatment, uh, but we also listened to the challenges that in certain uh, resource, lower resource settings um, we can face. But at the same time, we also saw the possible solutions that are happening right now. And to me, the presentation that Arne gave about what's happening in Assam and the great job that uh, Tata Trust is doing there, it remain uh, fundamental. So I, my message, my take home message is, um, we need to keep in mind, whenever we go back to our work in our individual roles, this equity message, how our work can help fill that gap and where to start it's to start from the people who are already doing work in those low resource settings the patient advocates already making policy change at lev level the clinicians working in remote settings there's a lot that's already happened how can we help them how can we help them, alessandro and as we are talking about patients advocates i have one here right kwanalele uh, asante what what do you take with you home from this these two days. Uh, thank you very much for asking me to comment and thank you for allowing me to be part of the proceedings over the last two days. What was very clear to me uh, and what, what was very exciting is to see the new innovations and the thought leadership that's happening around cancer control, uh, prevention and control from a Western perspective but I couldn't help also feel a little bit jealous as somebody that comes from the developing world to see how far behind we are. And my greatest takeaway would be to invite you all who are here to consider how we can 
start collaborating to close some of the disparities that Alejandro was speaking to, we saw two very different patient scenarios where we had Mary, who is my Twitter e-patient colleague from Ireland, speaking about what it means to be a patient advocate and to be involved in the 21st century cancer narrative. On the other hand, we heard a story of Nigeria. And for me, the question was, or still is, how do we, when we go home, start thinking of ways where we can bridge the knowledge divide, the evidence-based cancer knowledge divide to help African patients become health literate themselves so that they too can be partners in their own health instead of having to rely on their physicians or health systems only. Thank you. Alessandro, um, there is the main, the World Cancer Congress in October. Is this something you might take with you to there or? Absolutely. It's, I think I am an optimist and as Susan said on the first day, she, she also said she's an optimist probably because she's exposed to the great innovation and potential which is happening right now. And from my point of view, I'm an optimist because in my role at UICC, I'm exposed to the fantastic work and the all unsung heroes in that working in cancer control in very difficult and challenging situation. So I think what I will take is about making the World Cancer Congress a platform for that, for those voices and make sure that we can learn from them. Thank you very much, Alessandro and Quanelele. Thank you. Big applause.